I like this figure out to go along. <laughs>
I said, look, I don't mean a bit of harm, but I'm tired of looking at you. He said, listen, let him take me. <laughs> and, uh, but I want you to remember me that God will continue to touch me. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody else in the place? In the house, you have a need. God. God, yes. Usually it is when a child of God leaves this world, it's just, yes. they slip in and slip out. Yes. That's what I've noticed. And uh, so let's remember this family today, yes. You have a, you got to go to the dentist. I have everybody in church. That's it, everybody. You got it. Anybody else? Let's remember the Barker family today that God will touch them. Yes. My um, oh, Lord, what a nasty word. What a nasty word. Let's remember her today. Yes. Yeah, let's remember Chastity. Man. I tell you so many. How many have an, uh, an unspoken request? I want you to just look around and just take a glance at all of the needs. Amen. I happen to have some lost loved ones. But you will say, can we stand? Can we stand? Amen. <clears throat> Tell you what I want us to do. Just stretch your hand towards someone and pray for them right now. Will you do it? Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see every need in this place. You see every need in this house. But I ask you right now, God, for there is nothing impossible with you, for we do all things are possible. For we do all things are possible today. But I ask you, God, that you give for me. God, to reach down, God. God, and Lord, this heal the sick. God, touch those that reflected this morning. Lift the burdens, God. Lord, I ask you, Lord, the cares of this life. That we will touch them right now. Lord, that you will minister and move on your people today. Even by Facebook, even by YouTube today. God, that you will reach down even where they're in as they watch this. And God, that you will touch them. God, that they need to be saved, God. You shall lay the call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. And God, help them to call upon you today. God, we never need to save our lost love. Save our lost friends today. God, before it's too late, I ask you, God, for the day that you never need to go. We're going to give you glory. Now, will you just lift your hands right now and praise Him for doing it? Will you lift your hands right now and thank Him that He's still on the throne? That He's still on the throne? That He still answers prayer? That He's still right here with us? He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's a wonderful promise. What a reassurance that we have somebody with us all the way. Amen. I want us to, I want John and Brother Wood, Brother Lane and Brother Wood, Wood to come and let's take up offering today. Amen. Today and amen. I want you just to give under the Lord. Thank you. Listen. Thank you for all that you do. I want you to know I appreciate all that you do, our council, and uh, we all appreciate you. You make this thing possible. And listen, if we pull this thing together, we're going to build a new church. Amen. 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 I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. I'll tell some of you one here on Wednesday. He said, uh, Preacher, he's a preacher friend of mine. He said, listen, so I had a dream the other night. He said, you were building a new church. Yes, yeah, praise the Lord. I said, well, that's ironic. I said, we just started a, a, a thing to, to begin to build. He said, well, I'll tell you. He said, I'll give you $2,000 to help you start it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I said, how 
call me real quick to fix him. You say, well, that's a whole, that's, that's not a lot of money, but it is. $2,000 to me is good money. 500 to me is good money. I just believe that's the first step. God is starting to bless. He loves a who? Cheerful gift. Cheerful gift. Somebody get a joy Just like you enjoy buying that new dress or that new pair of breeches. Right? Or that new Nikes. Hello, somebody. Well, if you like me, now you have to go to a specialty store and get you some real good padded shoes. And those ain't cheap either. But God loves a cheerful giver. Father, I ask you today, God, to bless every person in this place. <laughs> God, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to meet the need. God, I ask you to touch everybody today. Bless those that have the gift. Those that don't. That which is given, Lord, let it go for the building of my kingdom. I ask you to bless, bless, bless in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know where it is.
Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated this evening. I want to thank you for being here today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Jesus. How many believe he's in the house? Well, he's here. Amen. Look at your name and say he's here. Look at somebody else say to do whatever you need. Do whatever you need. I believe that. I uh, will not be preaching this morning for some of you that are guests. I'm sorry. Uh, it just happened to work out that way. Uh, I tell you, he's my boss. He don't like that. He says we don't have a boss in this state. But he is uh, he is our evangelism uh, and missions director here in Western North Carolina. He's the chairman, if you will, of the board that I serve on uh, for the Church of God and been on it in about three years now. I have to come off next year, so they'll throw me to wherever. Uh, but that'll be all right. Uh, but listen, he loves God, and I'm excited about him being here. He's supposed to be here a few weeks ago. He had to cancel, and uh, he's a busy man, so we understand that. But he's here today. And he's preaching on Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, Brother Matt Gunner and his lovely wife is with us today. And I want you to just worship with him. Amen. amen. Get in as if I'm preaching. Somebody say amen. 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 And uh, so, just worship the Lord. Come on, Brother Gunner. It is to be in the house of the Lord this morning yes. and feel right. the presence of God. Yeah, you would not believe the places that we um, have been in ministry over the years that we have been that we're like, God, are you sure that this is your house? <laughs> we're not finding you here. Uh, but I feel the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. I appreciate our pastor. Amen. Let's give our pastor a hand. This morning. <laughs> Brother Ayers has been a friend to us. He has um, served alongside of us in what I like to say is we're cohorts in ministry. We work together to make things happen for the kingdom of God. And uh, to his lovely wife and the first lady of this house, we celebrate you and thank you for all that you do in ministry. And uh, let me just share this with you. You are blessed to have such a wonderful family. Leading you in the kingdom of God. I remember the first time that I ever um, met Ashlyn um, was at youth camp working ropes, the ropes course, and she was getting people suits up in their harnesses and stuff. And, and uh, now she's married and she's leading worship. And I tell you, God uh, knows how to raise them up. And I believe with all of my heart that you are a church that God is using to further the kingdom. And that with every soul that is saved, in every life that is changed, that See, God will continue oh, to yes. bless you. And I believe with our pastor that yes. before long we're going to see a new facility yes. set up here. And that God is just going to make that happen. Amen. Where God gives the vision, it's not up to us to finance it. He finances it. Amen. And you'll make a way. He'll give us what we need. But uh, what a privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And... Um, if it's okay, I would like to ask the musicians to come back up. They're not going to sing with me. Just a minute. Do um, we have time for that? Okay. Um, okay. this morning on give me Jesus and um, the reason I say give me Jesus is because I can never forget what he's done for me I can never forget the fact that he saved me and that he delivered me from sin I grew up in a parsonage home my dad pastored and uh, I knew what it was like to be in church to play church but when Jesus got a hold of my life, amen, I stopped playing and started serving. And, um, I just want to ask the Lord to help us this morning. If it's <laughs> Ooh. 
Verse 54. 
Lord, let me commend you while you're looking there for what you have done through this past year to continue working for the kingdom of God. You have had great leadership in this uncharted time. Yes. And I commend your leadership in this church, your pastor. But for you to continue pursuing and not give up, I celebrate that. <clears throat> the people that have turned away and chosen to do other things at other times and to put Christ and the church on the back burner, the numbers are staggering. But to you, I commend you. And that you have stayed the course in the midst of an unknown time. And I, I commend you today. Luke chapter 22, the Bible says, Then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him, and he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know not, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also them of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him before the cock crew, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. I want to preach on this song. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Amen. Father, we love you. We bless you. We praise you. And we magnify you today. Thank you for this house. Thank you for the time that we have here this morning to worship you and to magnify your name. We thank you for the word, and I pray that your word would be as sharp as it's ever been. God, that it would pierce the hearts of men today and women in this house. And God, that we can lift you up and magnify you and know that of a surety. God, that we have settled in our hearts that you are our Lord and our God. If there's somebody here this morning that does not know you, I pray, Lord, that they would surrender their life. And, God, that they would give a cry. Just give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We give you praise. In Christ's name, amen. Come somebody and say it's good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Jake Halpin and company polled a young group of people as they were getting ready to exit high school. And they asked them this question, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? 9.5% of them said that they would love to be a CEO of a major company or corporation. That's an ambitious thought. Honorable. Be great. 9.8% said that they, 9.8% said that they wanted to be a Navy SEAL. Again, what an honorable decision that they want to be the rest of their life. 13.6% said that they would like to be a U.S. Senator someday. I question that choice. But again, it's very ambitious. And I honor that. A place to serve. But 43.4% of the students said that they wanted to be a personal assistant to a celebrity. A very, a very shocking number. 43.4% said that they wanted to be the assistant to a celebrity. And whenever they begin to ask exit questions from the poll, they ask this question, why would you want to be uh, uh, an assistant to a celebrity? What would drive you to have that as an ambition in life and yeah. make you want to chart yeah, the course of life to boys. accomplish that yeah. goal? And here's the I'm reason why. They said we can okay. have yeah. the life without the pressure. 
We can live the life without the pressure. Now, I, I, I look at this today and I reflect back to Peter. And I look at Peter's life because this is nothing new for humanity to want to live the life but not have the pressure. Whenever I look at Peter, Peter was a man that was following Christ. And if we backtrack a little bit, we see his passion and his desire to be with Christ and to be a part of what Christ was doing. And he was there with him in the most critical times. He was there with him. And we, we find that before this ever takes place in this portion of Scripture that he was there preparing the Last Supper and he was very ambitious and wanted to be there at that Last Supper. And he went before them and prepared the meal and was upset at the fact that he couldn't sit beside Jesus at that meal. And he got upset because he felt like he had been slighted. He wanted to be there with Jesus. He wanted to live the life, but he didn't want the pressure. And then we find that he goes with him into the garden and even to the point that he was willing to defend Christ, he drew his sword, cuts off the ear of a soldier, and we find that Jesus has to do some damage control and puts the ear back on and heals him. And you know the story there, but you can see the passion and the desire for Peter. We don't question that at all, but Jesus knew something about Peter. He said, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. Because it's a natural tendency for us to want something but not have to pay for it. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. You see, we find that Peter wanted proximity to Christ, but he didn't want the pressures of following Christ. And that's the way many people are today. They want the proximity to Christ, but they don't want the pressures of following Christ. It's not easy to serve Jesus. It's not easy to follow after the plan and the will of God. It's not easy to do all that the Scripture says for us to do. But oh, if we can look like we're a Christian, if we can act like we're a Christian, just don't put the pressure of serving God on me. We'll show up on Sunday morning. We'll pay our time. We're giving our offerings. We want that proximity to the church and to Christ. But we don't want the pressures of serving Jesus. If you want the true test of whether you're right with God or not, you find yourself under pressure. You find yourself in a position where the world's coming against you. You find yourself in a position where you have to defend your faith. That's the true test of your Christianity. Amen. I say this morning, let's always be close to Christ. But listen, you're the pressure. Even in this past year, you have had to go through struggles of people asking you the question, why are you going to church? Do you honestly think that there's some best thing for you to do? They ask you the questions. How can you go and sit in a sanctuary full of people? When you know that there is a virus you know that there's trouble. I'm not going to call it quite persecution. But the church has had to stand the course. We've had to stay in the faith. We've had to commit ourselves that this is what's valuable and important to us. This is not negotiable for us. I agree that there are times that we may have to go online only. I agree that there are times that we may have to go outside and have service. I agree that there are times that we might have to social distance and limit ourselves. But whenever you tell me that I can't fellowship with the body of Christ, you have crossed the line. Amen. Because it's more important to me to serve God than it is to serve man. Come on, somebody. that we have to abide by. Yeah. And I'm not saying that this has been persecution for the church because this is nothing near what they have to do in China today. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. They're whispering to have church Amen. because they're afraid that somebody's going to come yes. in and, and beat yes. their door down and yes. beat them to death. Yes. But yet we're here this morning and though we have to do what little we have to do, I would rather face the pressures of what we're facing today yes. just so that I can have a relationship yes. with the Lord Jesus Christ. I Church is now gone. That's right. 
We don't know where they're at. Amen. We don't know what's happened to them. They've not, they've not stayed connected. They're not watching online. They're not doing anything. We don't know where they're at. They're safe enough to go to the beach. They're Hello. safe enough to go to Walmart. Oh. They're safe enough to go anywhere else. But they're not willing to face the pressure. Yes, right. It's not easy. It's not easy serving the Lord. Let's wipe the pandemic out of the way. Let's not even look at that this morning. And think about what we're facing in this world. The American church has never had the pressure on it like it's had before. Like it has now. We have government that's trying to restrict us, uh -huh. yes. and they've manipulated a sickness to do that. Oh, yes. Man. Come on. That's that's right. Right. That's right. This is not Republican, it's not Democrat. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. don't get offended at me. Come on. Right. This is not about white, it's not about black, it's not about who you support, it's not about it's not about anything other than the end times coming together. And the fact that there is a devil trying to push the, 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 the fire of the church. But we're living under pressure. We're living under teachings like we never have before. A social justice that is now trying to take away the validity of the Word of God. Amen. That if we preach against certain things, come on, come on now. if we preach against homosexuality, come on, come on. if we preach against come on. adultery, come on. come on, you can't separate sin. Right. Adultery is just as bad as homosexuality. We can't preach against fornication anymore without somebody writing on our sidewalks. We can't preach against people going out and fulfilling the lust of their flesh anymore without somebody posting on Facebook that we're a hateful church. Amen. I'm telling you that we're living in a time where the church is facing the pressure like we've never faced it before. But I say this. I'm willing to face the pressure. I'm going to keep yes. preaching yes. Jesus. Amen. I'm going to keep standing for the truth of God's word. And where God's word rejects it, I'll reject it. To where God's word affirms it, I'll affirm it. To. I'm going to celebrate Jesus in the word of God that became flesh to our lives. You know what would fix the problems with our police department? A good dose of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Do you know what would quell and, and, and squelch the racial teachings in our world today? Come on, Jesus. A good old dose of Jesus. Yes. 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 Do you know what would empty out our hospitals and our and our and our, our places of rehab where people are struggling to overcome addictions? Just a good old dose of Jesus. Yes. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm trying to tell you that as long as I've got the 66 books, as long as I can feel the anointing of God to preach them, as long as I can have a place to do it, I'm going to preach it. Amen. Because that's what will save the world. That's what's going to turn this world around. It's Jesus Christ in Christ. so much interested in just having a name and being in the proximity of Christ. But I'm willing to endure the pressures of Christ. Why is it that the pressures come? It's because there's an opposition to the will and the hearts of a wicked man. There will always be opposition whenever man tries to fulfill the own lust of his own heart. The Word of God teaches us that man has to surrender his life in order for Christ to be exalted. Yes. Yes, Just yes. give me Jesus. Yes. Amen. Peter found himself in proximity of Christ, but then he found him following afar off. Yes. 
He began to distance himself when the pressure became real. This is true of many people today. When the pressures get so heavy, they begin to fall off and get distant. They use excuses like, well, I just don't like controversy. I don't like conflict. I don't like to have to deal with people of opposing opinions. And so they back off and distance themselves. Now I'll confess to you that there are times that we should be silent. But there are also times that our voice needs to be heard loud. Why are we in such a trouble in America today? It's because the church chose to be silent when we needed to be vocal. Amen. And we were vocal when we should have been silent. Amen. We were preaching on things that we shouldn't have been preaching on. Amen. But there were things that we neglected because we wanted to preach on the things that became our pet projects. And we denied the things that were really the truth that we should have been standing up for. Amen. Amen. So the church has found herself in a position today where people don't know who she really is. But I want to ask you a question today. How are you this morning? Are you following Christ or are you following afar off? Are you distant from God or are you declaring the truth of God's word and saying, I'm going to stand for the truth no matter what comes against me. You see, Peter, no doubt, was afraid that he would be hung himself on a cross if he was ever connected with Christ that close. He was afraid that maybe he would have been tortured and he would have been hung on the cross if somebody would have connected the dots. And they were he was afraid that something could have happened to him. If you're living in fear of that this morning, I can tell you you're afar off. But you've got to make up your mind that if it means we go to the prison cell for standing for truth, let's go together. It means that we have to face persecution and we face the persecution here in our own nation. So be it. If it means standing for the truth, you've got to make up your mind. The Bible says that a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You've got to make a choice. It's the Christ of the cross or it's nothing. You see, Jesus understood that this was something that would have to take place. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For, the, for what is it profit a man is to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7, Paul said this, But what things were gained to me, though I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, I may that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul not only understood what it was going to take to get there, but he understood the rewards of being there. Amen. Yes, Come on, somebody. Yes. You see, whenever I look at the pleasure of serving Christ, on, it outweighs the pressures yes. of being yes. with Christ. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. It is a pleasure to serve the yes. Lord. Yes. It's a pleasure to know yes. Yes. that in spite of all the pressures that I've got one that said, I'll be with you unto the end of the age. That I've got one that said, by my stripes, you are healed. Yes, Amen. That I've got one that said that he would stick with me when my mom and my dad had forsaken me. That he would come and pick me up. I'm telling you, it's a pleasure to serve Jesus. It's a pleasure to know that everything's all right. No, we have to go through the pressures. No, we have to face all of those things that come against us. I'm glad to announce today that it's worth it. It's a pleasure to serve Jesus. I'm excited today to be serving him wherever I can. Doing whatever I can. Telling anybody I can about who he is and what he's done. This world has nothing to offer us. Hey, I say give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give us another good dose of Jesus in the church. People chase what becomes 
becomes a priority to them. That's right. They pursue their priorities. Yes. It's been yes. said if you want to know a man's priorities, do three things. Listen to his conversation. Yes. Look at his calendar. And look at his checkbook. Amen. And you'll find out exactly what's a priority Amen. to that individual. Yes. Many people today are pursuing a bigger house. They're pursuing a better job. They're pursuing a greater career. They're pursuing things that fulfill them here in this life. But yet, can we look at you today? And can we hear your conversation? Does your conversation speak of Christ? Does your giving, your checkbook, does it speak of Christ? Does your calendar say that you set aside time to do the work of ministry? Or is it full of everything else that the world has to offer us? Listen, I'm not against doing things that are entertaining to us. I'm not against living a life that God has blessed us with. Amen. If God's given you a house at the beach, I celebrate with you and I would say, by all means, go enjoy the beach. If He's given you a place at the mountains, thank God for that. I celebrate with you. You go enjoy that. But listen, it should never become a priority. The blessing of God to bless you, to bless others. It's not to you, for you to forsake Him. He will never allow you to be blessed and for you to forsake Him. It will always come back and you'll lose That's everything right. that you've got. Somebody yeah. hear me this morning. Oh. Amen. But there is a pleasure in serving God uh, that I would say this morning, you can have the house in the mountains. Uh, yes. You can have the one at the yes. beach. Uh, you can have the bigger house. You can have the better yes. job. Uh, you yes. can have it all. Uh, just give me a little more Jesus. Uh, just give me more time uh, along with Him. Uh, just let Him affect my life a little bit more. Uh, I don't care about those things any longer. got married we had to borrow money to pay attention <laughs> we were we were at a point that we would and this is honest truth you can ask her after service on Wednesday nights it was a rush time for us she taught school I was working a job it was before I took a position as a fireman chaplain at the fire department and I was working long hours. I would get home about 6. We lived 30 minutes away from church. She would get home about 6. We would jump in the car. We would head down the road. And we would hope that we could scrape up enough change to get a number 2 combo from McDonald's. And split it. You know what a number 2 combo from McDonald's was yes. at the time? Uh -huh. Two cheeseburgers. That's right. <laughs> we would split the drink. We would both have a cheeseburger. And we would split the fry. It was about $5.64. There were literally times that we would scrape up change yeah. to have enough Bender. just to get something to go to the house of the Lord and be sustained while we were there. And we would struggle like that. But I'm going to tell you, we committed ourselves that we would always pay our time. We would always be in the house of the Lord. And we would always go where God called us in the ministry. We didn't have any preset agenda. We didn't say we have ambitions to be here or here or here. We've done everything from street ministry to jail ministry. We have worked in every capacity in the church that you could possibly think. From just simply opening up the doors for people to come in and greeting them to the point that we pastor the church. And now God has us in a position serving and helping other pastors and working alongside pastors. God has taken us from that point. But we made up our mind that we're going we're gonna to make Jesus a priority. Amen. Jesus Christ and the yes. ministry of the gospel yes. was going to be a priority for us. Yes. And so God moved us from place to place. 
We had to be willing to sacrifice. Right. And Tracy and I both left careers to go pastor a church. We went down to a third of our income, not knowing how we were going to make our house payment that we couldn't sell at the time because the market had plummeted and there was nobody wanting to buy houses. We didn't know how we were going to be able to make the, the car payment that we had. We both had great careers. She was in the school system. I was with the fire department. We didn't know how in the world we were going to be able to make it pastor in a church. But here's what I'm trying to tell you is that God honors it. Yes, yes. God honors your yes. sacrifice. Yes. You make your yes. But good people, listen to me. Yes. Listen to me very clear. Always put God as a priority. Yes. If you yes. seek Him and His kingdom first, the yes. Bible says, seek Him first, the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness. Yes. And then all of these things yes. shall be added unto you. God is a God that's worth serving this yes. morning. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll church and to go to work until God puts oil in my furnace. If God can do it for that man, yes, he can do it for me. Right. And we begin to pray. And we were asking God. You know, during the daytime, you can make do, but whenever it gets 20-something degrees at night in an old house that's falling apart, it's sort of tough. And I was praying. I said, God, you can do it before the evening's over. You can make a way. Now, this is on a Sunday. I went back to church that afternoon and had a man come up to me and put money in my hand. Oh, yeah. There was a minister, or a, a men's meeting called in the church. We had said nothing to nobody. Her mom and dad lived right beside us, didn't know a thing about what was going on. But somebody went to the pastor and said, I feel that God has laid this on my heart. Oh, and they took up enough money yes, yes. that the next day, let me tell you something, the next day to the penny on the truck, I saw it myself that God put oil in our tank for what those people had to do. I'm trying to tell you that whenever you're willing to do what God has called you to do, He'll always make a way when it seems impossible. It's a pleasure to serve the Lord because I know that He shall supply all of my needs according to His riches in glory.
do me this favor. I don't know. You know what ministry is like. You don't know where you're going to be. And you don't know where God's going to lead you. But whenever you have a dedication service for that building, please invite me. ourselves and we put ourselves if we could use this as an analogy on the back row of the church because we're not good enough to come to the front my wife and I were talking on the way over we're like we hate sitting on the front row we hate it because that's where important people are supposed to sit and so babe maybe you'll let us sit where we want to <laughs> but it's true no. You don't find the Queen of England sitting on the back row. No. You don't find the president sitting on the back row. But we minimize, our, we minimize our ministry and what we're able to do and we delegate or relegate ourselves to the back of the church That's because right. we don't have to offer what somebody else may have, may have to offer. But what you have to offer is not based on the wealth of this world. That's right. 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 You know what I've learned? A simple hallelujah yes. That's exactly might be right. all that it takes for Amen. God to come into the house yeah. and to do what He wants to do in somebody's life simply because you chose to give Him a hallelujah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. One preacher said, just give Him half a hallelujah. Yeah. If that's all you've got, yeah. give it to Him. Because that may be the key to somebody's liberation. Yes, yes. It may be the key to somebody Glory. being set free. Yeah. It may be the key to somebody hearing the word of the Lord that morning. It doesn't matter what you pay in your tithe. Just pay your tithe. It doesn't matter what you're able to give in the offer. Just give. It doesn't matter. Just give what you can to God. And God can take it and bless it. Multiply it. The kingdom can be advanced by it. Oh God help us. Position of lesser than somebody else just because we don't feel like we have that much to give. Just give me Jesus and I'll worship with anybody. Just give me Jesus. That's all I want. You know, we, we have to come to the place, and this is where I come in ministry. That if I can find somebody 
It just has a hankering to serve the Lord. That's right. That's right. I don't care where they're from, what they have. I don't care anything about all that. Yeah. I don't care. It just doesn't matter to me. I've, as a pastor, I pastor the homeless men and women. I pastor prostitutes. They come into our church and got cleaned up. People that were set free from drugs. My, one of my friends, he was mentally gone. He was a homeless man. And I would ask him, Gary, can we get you a place to live? Can we help you? I said, nope, I'm good. He was happy. He said, preacher, that's what he called me. He said, preacher, I can tell you this, I'm better off than you are. I said, why is that, Gary? He said, I've never paid taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me people that want to serve the Lord. That's right. right. Yeah. And the kingdom can give them. Yes. That's right. We're not looking for people that are perfect. That's right. That's We're right. not looking for people that are polished. That's right. We're not looking for people that quote unquote have it all together. Just give me somebody that has an ambition. Yes. To put Jesus at the center of their life. Yes. Yeah. That counts the rest of it all but done. That's yeah. right. And the kingdom can be advanced. There you go. You know, we can chase demographics. We can chase this or that or another. But we should be saying, God, if it's the waitress at the table that I go to today, if I can just find an ounce of hope to give them, that they would see you and that they would want more of you. Help me to do it. Just give me Jesus. Because whenever you get Jesus, you can't help but to give it to somebody else. Yeah. You can't help but to let somebody else know, hey, Jesus loves you, sister. Jesus loves you, my brother. Jesus loves you, sister. Jesus loves us. And it doesn't matter who we are. He loves us. I was reading this week, preparing for a funeral, and I was doing some study, and I've uh, we're after today, and I had to apologize for our pastor. After today, we're heading to our sixth funeral in four days. But I was studying for a funeral, and I began to read in Ephesians, and it says, Because of God's grace and because of God's mercy, He loved us. God didn't have to love me, right. but out of His grace. And out of his mercy, he loved me. And I was sitting there crying. I said, God, thank you for your grace. And your mercy. God's grace and his mercy is extended to every person in this place. This yeah. God's grace and his mercy is extended to every person that surrounds this church. God's grace and his mercy. And out of his grace. And out of His mercy flows His love for you and I. Oh, how He loves you and me. Oh, how He loves you and me. He came and died. What more could He give? Oh, how He loves you and me. Would you stand with me right now, musicians? Would you?
It's meant to be opened, explored, pursued. It's made to be read, reread, applied, and used. The sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, with wisdom life changing to lead us on. It's made for guidance to teach us His ways, showing what's true, right, and worthy of praise. It's meant to be hidden deep in our hearts, daily examined as the morning starts. No greater glimpse of God do we have, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path.